Can angels bring people new hearts? My guest says he knows it's true. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and have you seen an angel? I have some guests that have not only seen angels, but they would not even be alive if it wasn't for angels. Dawn, in 1976, you're living in a uh, trailer park in Sedalia, Missouri, and what happened? Well, I had woke up at about 3 o'clock in the morning with um, almost like the bed shaking and the wind howling outside the window. And I was terrified of storms, so um, I, I felt like maybe I needed to get up and check on things, but I was so scared I was afraid to move out of my bed. So I looked up the window and opened the curtains, and the, sure enough, the wind was knocking the trees down to the floor, to the ground. and. Um, I remember crawling back underneath the bed thinking, if God doesn't spare us, it's not going to be a pretty sight when it's done. And um, I felt like the Lord had told me, get up and look out the window again. I don't want to look out the window again. You pretty know? foolish. You, know, you don't yeah. want to see that. It's bad enough that it's happening. Right, right. Am I going to look at it again? <laughs> and uh, I just felt like I needed to do what God had told me. I was obedient and I looked out the window and to my astonishment, I looked out and saw these huge, absolutely massive, white robed beings. And their faces were so bright that I couldn't see them. But they had a hood on the top of their head, and they had a, a tie around their waist. And they were standing there holding hands, and, and you could almost see their hands gripping. Um, and they were, their backs were faced to the wind, and their front was faced to me. And I lay back down again in the bed. I thought, did I just see that? And the Lord spoke to me again, told me, look again. I still want to show you something. And this time when I looked up, I saw the entire mobile home being encompassed by all these angels. Every one of them were holding hands. And they were eight feet, 10 feet tall, somewhere around in there. They looked like basketball players, but their shoulders were as broad as, as football players. They were massive in size. How did you feel when you saw this? Just, I, I was absolutely amazed, and, and I was like, am I seeing what I'm seeing? Have you ever seen angels before? No, I, I don't recall ever seeing an angel before. So uh, what, what happened to all that fear? It absolutely left, and I just, I just felt such a peace, an overwhelming peace that, that there was no more fear, that I didn't need to be scared of what the wind and the storm would do because God had sent beings to protect me and he loved me enough to do that for me. How, how much damage occurred to your trailer? Absolutely none. There was no damage whatsoever. Now, none. if the angels were not there, what do you think would have happened? Well, there were, there were trees around us, and there was, we lived on a gravel road, so the uh, gravel was, you know, before I looked, when I looked out the window the first time, the trees were bending over, touching the ground, so they wouldn't have lasted very long and could have come through the windows of the mobile home. That's why I actually didn't want to look out the window, because I was afraid that one of the tree limbs was going to go flying mm. through the window. And um, we were, the mobile home was secured and tied down, but you could feel the mobile home moving. And the wind outside was making this freight train sound. And I was just, but God sent his protection in a form that I could see it so that I would never be afraid of storms again. Uh, but you ran into something actually even, I think, worse than the storm. Tell me about that. Well, um, probably around four or five years ago, I was faced with um, some demonic activity going on in my home. And I wasn't quite for sure what I was supposed to do about it. But yeah, you, you were an abused wife. Yes, I was. 
uh, for many years. And it seemed to get worse as the years go on with the abuse growing and the violence getting worse. And I remember um, that during that time, there was never any, any way for us to know what we were gonna deal with when he came home at night. One night it would be fine, the next night it would be horrible. Well, after many, many times of abuse, he got up one morning, couldn't find the keys to the car, and got irate. And when he got irate, I saw his eyes literally turn red, the pupils of his eyes mm -hmm. turn red, and the fear that overwhelmed me um, was, was horrible. He um, got so angry that he um, wound up choking me, making a concussion, knocking me out. I remember trying to get out of the house at the time, and it was as if he would, uh, he would translate from one place to another place so quickly that I couldn't get out. And um, I remember him coming after me at the last minute, and I looked over and saw the Word of God, and I, I, something inside me told me to pick up the Word, and I picked it up, picked and up I, the Bible. I picked up the Word of God, and I put it up in front of me so that the Holy Bible read outward, hmm. and that's just the way I picked it up. And I picked it up and held it in front of me, and I just prayed in the Spirit, saying, God's please spare my life, because I knew that I was not dealing with a human being. I was dealing with legions of demons inside this man. possessed human being. Yes. And so it was as if when I started praying, God stopped him in his tracks. He froze. He didn't move. You, you, mean, you mean he's coming towards he's, you. <laughs> you, you hold up the Bible yes. facing him. Yes. And he froze. And he froze. You're, you're not exaggerating. No, I'm not exaggerating. He froze. He didn't move. I, yeah, I don't even think he breathed. You know, <laughs> he just stopped and he didn't do anything. And his eyes, his eyes got really big as if he was seeing something behind me. And I don't know what it actually was, but as soon as that happened, he, after he froze and he looked, he wound up collapsing in the chair right beside him. He just <laughs> collapsed. But what do you think that he saw behind her? I think he saw some of those same angels that protected her in the trailer park. I want to go to Janie in the control room. Janie, you saw an angel also. Tell me about that. Well, Sid, I used to be a school teacher in a Greek Orthodox school, and all the children during the summer would go to Greece, and they would come back with bugs. <laughs> So I was teaching them, and I hate to say it, but I ended up having bugs, and I couldn't get rid of these bugs. So I was trying to sleep one night, and I'm thinking, how am I going to get rid of it? And I thought of four scriptures. I thought, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. When I lay down, I'll have a sweet sleep. By Jesus' stripes, I was healed. And... And, and the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. I said those four scriptures, but I didn't really feel anything. I, I started lying down, and all of a sudden, I felt this hand grab my arm, and my body filled up with mo the most intense fear. And I knew that that was not an angel, but that was a demon. I looked over, but I couldn't see anything, but my body was so full of fear. But all of a sudden, I looked up on my ceiling, and I saw a big man, and he was an angel, and he was just floating on my ceiling, and I wanted to keep looking at him, but I fell completely asleep, and the next morning when I woke up, all the bugs were gone. We'll be back right after this, but do angels smile? Do angels smile at you? I have a man that says they do. Be right back after this. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I asked you a question. Have you ever seen 
and angels smile? Do you believe angels smile? My guess says they do. Joseph Morris, tell me about the smiling angel. Well, I was, I was in a meeting in Seekonk, Mass, and uh, working for an evangelist, and uh, all of a sudden I looked up and there was an angel standing there. Was that the first time you ever saw an angel? Yes, sir, first time. I was just as shocked as anybody else would be. I was brought up in a normal home, not to think anything weird what about religion. What did the angel look like? He looked, had long brown hair, looked like a real strong man, about eight feet tall. Actually had his head bent over a little bit. Uh, even though there was a drop ceiling, I assume he could go through it, but he was bent over a little bit like that. And it just shocked me, and then he turned and smiled at me. I was going to make a new exit door because it so scared me because I was brought up not to ask for visions or anything weird like that. And, but I saw him around these other ministers helping them in a service. Uh, like every move they would make, he would move, make the same move, almost as though he was like a, a guardian type angel, I guess, and real big, tall, strong. And he smiled? Yes, smiled. Scared me so bad. I was like, oh my word, because it just shocked me. So he knew that you knew that you were seeing him. That's how it seemed, as though it was almost just as neat to him that it was freaking me out. And it was totally freaking me out, because I was like, oh my word, I'm seeing, I'm, you know, I started looking around thinking, I'm seeing something. Then I looked down again, I looked up, and they were still there. And uh, so I was trying to make sure I hadn't lost my mind, but now I realized that they were there, yeah. And then another time, an angel actually uh, told you something about your family. Yes, I was on, traveling on the road at that time away from my wife and uh, we had some financial needs and I was trying to work up thinking how am I going to take care of this and actually I was taking a bath in a hotel <laughs> in, in, in uh, Virginia and, and I sensed something and looked up and there's this huge angel standing right there and it just so shocked me. Uh, I didn't really know what to do and then I quoted scripture to him uh, that God supplies all my needs and he disappeared. But I thought it would need for you to now, wait what, a few minutes. How did, how did this particular angel look? Similar. Uh, looked was like it the a, same one or different? I, no, I don't think so. He looked totally different, but uh, similar as far as a man, long, long hair, almost kind of a darker brown hair. Uh, I didn't really get caught up in the features. I was just shocked at the, at, I was in the bathtub. And uh, so <laughs> I, I, wasn't, I was thinking if you'd waited a couple of minutes, you, know, you think of all the cool things you'd want to say. Of course. And it just doesn't happen like that. You're too shocked. So uh, I just quoted a scripture to Were him. you afraid? No, I really wasn't. I was shocked, a, a moment of afraid, for, and then, mm -hmm. then a peace. And then after I quoted the scripture, about three days later, our finances were met and uh, everything was fine. So tell me how you think that dimension worked. Do you think that th you said a scripture about your finances? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. From the Bible. And so what did this angel do with this scripture? I believe he went uh, and, and brought it to pass. I think he was waiting for my words as far as the scripture says waiting for me to speak what is rightfully mine. And uh, I think they're here all the time waiting for that. We just don't see them. So you think like right now on this set, we're surrounded with angels? I believe we are, yes, even though we don't see them. How come you see them and most people don't? That's a good question. Uh, it would be what we call discerning of spirits, one of those gifts of the spirit in the scriptures. And it, I never prayed for it, never thought about it. It just began to happen. Uh, one of the men that I was around as far as working uh, had that happen at times, but I never wanted that. And uh, just all of a sudden uh, in 86, that began to happen. And I think it was leading me to when I was in a service, a miracle would happen. And I wouldn't want to leave the service or freak out. I would get used to that happening so that it didn't scare me so bad. I think the Lord was trying to train me a little bit to, to get used to it. Well, I don't know about you, but I, there was one time that I saw an angel. And that's why I can believe about the smiling angel. I was on my way to St. Petersburg, Russia, and I was making a telephone call. Mm -hmm. And the man at the next booth, I was a little concerned about because sometimes people try to steal your, uh, you, you know, your code number sure. that sure. you're calling. And so I'm looking at him, and he's smiling at me. And I'm thinking, are you a thief or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I kept my eye on him, and finally he walks away. And I, I look, uh, you know, is he, is he around my back looking right. for, for my, my number, my code that I'm using? Sure. And he's not behind my back, and there was a long corridor. There was nowhere for him to oh, go. He, he was gone. He disappeared, wow. Yeah. But he had the nicest smile, and I had oh. the best meetings. Oh, isn't that great? <laughs> and St. Peter's, tell me another angel story. Uh, several different ones. I saw an angel uh, stand by this woman in a meeting in Pennsylvania, and I was praying for her back. Words of knowledge that I have are, are, are in a service. I, I knew that a woman had been in a car wreck. She came down. I'm getting ready to pray for her. All of a sudden, I, uh, the whole, I realized to back away from her a little bit, just to wait a moment. And as I did, I looked up, and there was a, an angel just like those other times, standing beside her, messing with the side of her head. But I was on the other side of her, so I really couldn't see. So I'm, I said, what's going on with your head? So I'm just asking her, and, she, and her eyes looked up like that, and she goes, I can hear. And I didn't know that she'd been deaf in this left ear. So 
uh, the fruit of it was she got her hearing back, and I really don't care how it happens. I just saw the angel stand there and really didn't see what he did, but, uh, but she was fine after that, so it was neat. Well, I, I, I think neat is, is too mild a word. It wasn't just neat, but did you hear what Joseph Morris said? That there are angels around us all the time waiting to do what God's Word from the Bible tells us. Yes. So I have a favorite word from the Bible. All things are possible to those who believe. So I'm believing angels are about ready to move on that word. What do you need in your life? We'll be right back after this. Let's go to the control room and find out from Janie who our guest next week is. Janie? Sid, you'll be interviewing a man by the name of Dave Roberson, and this man has spoken languages such as French, Spanish, Aramaic, German, but no one ever taught it to him. He, he, spoke, he spoke those languages supernaturally, and that's happened to me, and I know it's happened to you, Sid, and when it happens, I mean, I've been in, it, with people who would speak French, and then all of a sudden, when I would pray, it would come out in French, it would be something like this. Listen, it's a supernatural language. Uh, listen, Janie, I studied German in high school, and I sure wish I had learned it supernaturally. I, I had a rough time with German. Uh, but one of these days, I believe that all things are possible to who, those who believe. As a matter of fact, have you ever spoken in a language that you've never been taught, that someone's recognized? Sure, yes. What was that? Uh, it was like Japanese in a time uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was speaking in tongues and, and somebody said, that's Japanese. I said, well, how do you know that? So well, I speak Japanese. And I was mm. speaking of the wonderful works of God and didn't even know what I was saying. But, mm. yeah. but I'm, I'm interested in this woman and the new heart. How did you even know about that? <laughs> well, I was in a service and I looked up and these two angels were standing there and I was shocked once again. Cause I, and so I looked down and I thought, you know. You're shocked a lot, I've noticed. Well, I, <laughs> well you know, I wasn't ex anticipating that. So, yeah. And they, were, they looked so intently like they were looking at me for such a purpose. They weren't there just to, you know, hang out. They were there for a purpose. So I ducked my head and I was waiting for my friend to come in and preach. And uh, he came in and started preaching, and uh, then the, 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 I had a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit told me on the inside that those angels had come to deliver a woman a new heart. I still didn't think I was going to do that. I thought maybe my friend preaching was mm -hmm. going to do that. At the end of the service, he didn't call it out. So I got up and said, there's a lady here that needs heart, uh, has heart trouble. I wasn't quite as bold as I should have been. This lady got up, and I said, as a matter of fact, you need a brand new heart. I got real bold when she came down. <laughs> and she said, yes. And uh, as I was thinking, Lord, heal this woman before she dies. She looked like she's going to drop dead right there. Mm. Well, I told her that these angels had come. I said, but Jesus is your healer. You're redeemed from the curse and that kind of stuff. The, and uh, she fell out, went back to her seat. And, so when you uh, say she fell out, she, the Spirit of God put she, her over backwards. Yes, sir. And as she laid there for a moment, you could see life come back into her, color come back into her, went back to her seat. But the, the wonderful thing was they gave the altar call. She came down, gave her life to the Lord, and her family did. Well, she goes back to the doctor. The doctor does an EKG. He goes, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on with you? Her heart muscle was so damaged, she needed a transplant. He said, uh, you've got a brand new heart muscle. She, you know, it's just, it doesn't even read the same. So the newspaper people found out about it. They came on Wednesday. We didn't know there were newspaper people. We we're just preaching the Bible. And uh, so they wrote down things redeemed from the curse of law, quoted scriptures that we had quoted in that service. Well, come Friday night, we came to the service and the entry of the church was filled with people with candles, incense, all kinds of interesting things. But they had heard an article uh, came out that afternoon that angels bring woman new heart. So all these people came to hear about the angels, but they got the good news preached them that night. And I saw all these people come forward and give their life to the Lord. So that's what that demonstration was for, I believe. I mean, and this woman was literally given a brand new heart. Yes, that's what the doctor said. He was shocked. He said, where did you go? She said, I went to a gospel meeting and a man preached and, mm -hmm. and laid hands on me and, uh, and she was healed. In Italy, there was someone with a cancer and a tumor? Yes, three weeks ago I was in Rome, Italy, a suburb mm -hmm. right outside of Rome called Le Dispoli. I may not be pronouncing that right, but I had a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit told me somebody there had uh, cancerous growth. Uh, some people came down and uh, a little girl had her head wrapped around and uh, I didn't know at the time they'd given her two weeks to live. 
I said, I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. And I said, you can go back to your seat. And her parents just stood there waiting for me to do something radical or whatever. Mm -hmm. I said, no, she's fine. She's healed, according to the Word of God. Well, like she goes back to the doctor. The doctor checks her. She, he goes, You're, it's completely disappeared. It was inside her head like that. So but, she was but wait a second. The doctor said two weeks to said. live. Two weeks to live. And then instantly heal. You see, when I say all things are possible to those who believe, they, they really are. Uh, Joseph, if yes. as we're speaking, as a matter of fact, would you pray for people to be healed yes. and, and see if you move into supernatural words of knowledge? Yes, Would you do yes, that now? yes, yes. Father, we thank you for this, this audience uh, hearing the words about all things are possible to him that believeth. We thank you, Lord, that this is a year that you'll be almighty to us. I, I thank you for healing uh, chronic asthma right now, Father. We command lungs to be whole in the name of Jesus, lenses in people's eyes. We thank you, Father, for, for repairing damaged lenses. I command a, a carotid artery right now that is blocked. I command that artery to be open right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for demonstrations of the resurrection in this day. We thank you for uh, a digestive tract uh, problem being restored right now, Father. Cancer, uh, cancerous growth in a colon. You, you cancer, you die right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for these folks that are whole. We thank you for revelation about what we have, Father, that all things are possible to him that believeth. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for deafness to be gone, ears to be open right now, uh, perfect hearing in Jesus' name. We thank you for a taste to come back to somebody's mouth. They'll, they'll be able to taste their food, Father. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Now, that was very specific. And uh, have you ever had a word like that before about the taste? Yes, I've had still? several about that, yes. I've had one where I saw a gash on a person's tongue. I said, there's a person here, you got a gash on your mm -hmm. tongue. A child came down, was playing with a snapping turtle, and uh, the turtle put a big old rip on his tongue. I saw a woman get poked in the eye with a fork one time, and I called it out. And, and an elderly woman came down. Her sister had poked her in the eye with a fork, so she was healed. But just unusual things like that, but thank God he knows everything. Now, you also know uh, uh, almost warnings about accidents. Explain that. Uh, at different times, I've had the, the Holy Ghost warn me ahead of time about things like that. I had a vision of a brother in a plane crash, and uh, a tw at the time, he didn't even have a, a plane. And s six years later, he ended up getting a plane, and and uh, he was rescued from that and uh, supernaturally was taking off on this runway, had engine failure and came to a stop at the end. And I believe people in his church began to pray, but the Lord just warned me that way. That's called a word of wisdom, technically. Uh, but uh, it was to get me to pray so that that wouldn't happen. What happened in Pittsburgh? Uh, several things. Uh, 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 a child had leukemia, got healed, a little young lady. Uh, My goodness. And a friend of mine's a doctor. He said, he said no, it just went into remission. I said, well, they, one minute they had leukemia, the next minute they didn't. And uh, so I gave him a hard time. He's a believer, but it still shocked him too. But it was a young, uh, about 10-year-old girl was healed of leukemia there. What about you? There's something that is wrong with you that is beyond something physical. You see, you are separated from a vital relationship with God. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about saying a prayer with Billy. I'm talking about knowing God. I'm talking about not knowing because some man tells you you know. I'm talking about knowing God because you know Him. I'm talking about a purpose for your life, a destiny for your life. And I want you to pray with me because there's a presence of God right now that is going to change your life. Someone's back was just healed in Jesus' name. Say this prayer right now, out loud. Dear God, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me for all the horrible things I've done in my life. I'm so sorry. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and by his blood, I'm forgiven, and now that I am clean, I make Jesus my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, come inside of me, take over my life, I make you Lord over every area of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it, God heard it. And I pray, Spirit of the living God, become so real to everyone that prayed that prayer 
that no one can ever take that relationship away. I speak shalom to you, great shalom, great peace in Jesus' name. Now, it's yours, amen.